<laughs> standard red team final ban. Yeah, I mean, you have to ban Kassel in pretty much every game. That's how it is. I like the ban from Fnatic. It's very standard and they take away the Kassex. They don't yeah. take any chances on this one. But why are they going to go here for first pick? So much open, really. I mean, Yasuo, who's... He's fell out of the, the bands a little bit more from the first weeks that we saw him coming in. I'm also not being super impressed by a Yasuo yet, I have to say. Yasuo as a champion is very, very strong, but he's very hard to play. And yeah. you need these knockups to, you know, get you going. So you need a combo build around him. And generally, when you have safer picks, who's doing pretty much the same role, you go with these instead. So first pick is going to be oh. coming in, and it's a Jinx first pick there. So Genjo obviously uh, feeling that one. He has played himself. A lot of Jinx. In fact, only Jinx and one time he played Lucian. That was the first game against Fnatic where they lost. <laughs> it was. And right now, they put Fnatic in the spot where they have to decide between either Lucian or Sivir as the two standard picks. And Jinx will be able to deal with them, especially around the level 6 mark where they can have a lot of damage. Or well, Reckless goes somewhere completely different. Tristana is something that he pulled out quite a lot last year. I can see, see about that one. Huh? We talked about Kog'Maw earlier. I want to see it. I don't expect to see it, but it would be nice. I'd be very surprised if we yeah. did, but who knows? Who knows what they're going to throw our way. It's Fnatic here really running that clock down. You can see that very concentrated at this point. These first two picks are going to be so important for them. What are they going to go with? That's not a bad one. Let's take Lee Sin away from Diamond. And bring it onto Sayonara, who's been impactful with it. They also take Gragas first. Yeah, Gragas. Pretty much the safest mid laner you can pick in a blind pick situation. He can lane against everything, and once he gets a few levels under his belt, he can just start shoving the lane and roam around. Peg has been playing Gragas before, and he's yeah. been doing such a great job. He outfarms everyone on this champion. The Lee Sin for Cyanide, I like this. He was so good on it yesterday. He set up a lot of, you know, plays when, they, when there's really nothing going on. He just came in, kicked someone back to the team, and they took the kill. On the other side, Mundo. Those big tanky top laners, obviously, uh, in, in big contestion point at this point. And uh, it's actually, you know, Dr. Darian on Dr. Mundo. Loves that kind of champion where, you know, he's got the movement speed, he's got all that health regen, he can just do whatever he wants. He can do pretty much everything he wants on the map, and he wants people to come and try and kill him. Yeah. So Gambit can do something else. It's a perfect champion for him, more or less. Yeah, and the fact that Mundo stays alive for so long is perfect for him when there's three men chasing him and the rest of Gambit are pushing down other objectives. Thresh also going to be picked up here for Edward. This opens up for Fnatic though. A lot of picks in the top lane because Mundo is weak in the early game. You can take a lot of things that can farm easily against him and then, you know, have an impact in teamfights. Trundle, for instance, would be a very good pick versus him. You take some of his tank in his late game and you also completely pressure him early game and you have full control. And actually, we saw the first time that these two teams met in the first game of the season, Trundle versus Mundo in that top lane. First time that we uh, saw Trundle coming in, well, first time that we'd seen Soaz really committing himself to these tanky top laners. But it worked for him. I mean, yeah. he was so strong that game. Once you get the play of the Rune King, you can just, you're gonna split push. You don't even have to be just full tankish. You can just run around the map and keep pressure everywhere. And we talked about how much damage he has on turrets. So if you actually get to that point, you just gotta pile the turrets down. That could also, I'm not gonna rule it out just yet, even though we weren't impressed with Gragas top lane. I'm not gonna rule it out just yet. That Fnatic I could react to that one. I'm gonna take the chance and rule it out. Okay. The source has said how boring tank Gragas is. He's also played Shen, to say in that. But you, you do nothing on a tank, Gragas, other than stand there and then throw your ultimate when the fight starts. You throw your belly into people's faces <laughs> at the start of the fight. Uh, let's have a look at what Gambit are going to finish off with. I don't expect Warwick to come out, no. Uh -oh. no. I don't expect Diamond to have Mundo on the jungle, I'll put it that way, so that, that Warwick could go elsewhere. I don't think it's going to be Heimerdinger either. Edward always playing with us. But they've got the AD carrying support, they've got the top laner, so we're looking for a mid laner and a jungler here. Zed and Eve. Eve is locked in. From what we saw yesterday, it's actually AD Eve with yeah. Blade of the Room King, and he focuses 100% on just auto attacking and catching out targets. And the ultimate for him late game, oh, pick up Set as well. Scary stuff. You're split pushing on Set, you want to go and try and gank him, but you have no idea if, e if uh, Eve is nearby, because she's stealth, you can't really spot her out unless you have the pick ward, then she can clear herself. So it opens up for a lot of movement around the map here for Gambit. And our question now is, do they change that mid laner and build a tanky Gragas in there? Does it change Soaz's picks even if that Gragas goes into the middle? 
They could go for something like a Shen now to try and stop the, some of the split pushing. But a Trundle, a well farmed Trundle with Bladed Rune King, will be able to deal with, with Alex as well on the set. Braggers vs. Set matchup, that's pretty much even. No risk for anyone here, and I think they will just keep picking on the Braggers. And it was Fnatic, funnily enough, that banned Kale. Mordekaiser. No. I, I know, usually you'd say definitely no, but. Thanks to Overpower, we still have to have a few questions uh, about that one. And they are going to be changing things up here. So as you move in, final pick of this one will, in fact, be Fizz. Is that a tanky top lane Gragas to Fizz? It might not be a tank Gragas yet. He can still go full AP on it. If it is, <laughs> then wow. Okay, Soas took the Fizz. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Soas. Saved you on that Thank one. Thank you. Uh, I'll let you off on that one. But no, Oh, don't do that. Who's the expert here to fish I talked with him. We could, we could I get into this whole him. thing with Demon yesterday, I but talk with I don't Soros. want to offend you. Yes, I mean last week, and he said, you know, Tank Gragas, I don't really think it's good. I don't think he does anything. I think it's boring. I don't want to play it. If he's playing it now, he lied to me. He either lied to you, or they picked that completely reactionary to the Zed pick that came out in the final round from Gambit. But here's the thing. Tank Gragas was in Mundo. It's not really a matchup that does anything. Gragas is not going to beat Mundo unless he goes for AP Gragas. And maybe they want to lane swap around. He's going to farm one lane. If he goes for the AP version, I can actually see him free farming and then bullying out Dr. Mundo. If he goes full tank Gragas, it's going to be pretty much just a farm lane. Now, well, some very interesting picks in this one. Let's tally up the thumbs and see who you guys pick to win. 70% of you in total have gone for Fnatic on this one. So 70 to 30. <sighs> Considering this is a 7 for 0 Fnatic right now that have not lost and, and have played every single team so far, beaten them all, I think that's about right. Yeah, pretty much, but at least people are showing respect to Gambit and saying we actually believe you're one of the teams who can beat Fnatic. Yeah. We've seen some of the, of the other votes where it was like 90 to 10%. This is a bit more even, and I agree with it. And to be honest, we've got Alex Hitch playing a champion that is brilliant. On he played Kazix, and we we saw him before in the in the previous season on Zed, and it's his birthday as well, which might just play in, uh, into the fact just wants that win a little bit more. I really want to see this Gragas though. What way he's gonna build it? If he goes full tank, then I was completely wrong, and I will admit that. If he goes for AP though, I save something at least. You save something. I'll I'll definitely let you off on it. If he goes AP, if he's tanky, I'm not gonna let you live it down. But we are in game here. Gambit versus Fnatic. And this one, a classic match in League of Legends by now. If Gambit picked this one up, we'll actually be tied at 9 to 9 overall. Fnatic are currently 9 8 in the uh, overall head to head between these two teams over an entire year. Uh, we do see Adoran's ring start, by the way, on Soas here. So he's certainly going a bit more damage heavy. I just checked his runes. He has 50 AP right now with the Doran's ring. So he's definitely going for the full AP version, and he's now going to try and bully Darian out of the lane. How is that going to work for him? I'll put that question to you. How is Mundo versus a full AP Gragas actually going to work in the laning phase? Once Source gets a few levels, he can just shove the wave constantly. With his body slam and also his ultimate level 6, he's fairly safe for ganks. If no CC bringing right there, and at the same time, you need to hit a cleaver to actually get the slow and Gragas, so you can just push, 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 and punish Darian. I actually expect him to maybe try and dive him later on, if they constantly keep him low. Oh, another question here, we saw Evelyn yesterday, 1-1-4, they actually finished their diamond on that one, caused a few problems for, uh, I say a few problems, a lot of problems really, for Alliance in that one. How are Fnatic going to deal with it, and how do you deal with an Evelyn? Normally what you can do is lane swap and then you force Evelyn to either go into 3v1 and hit the turret down uh, in the one side or you force her to come up and defend in the other side. So you always have vision of where she is. The annoying part about Evelyn is when you are in these 2v2 lanes and 1v1, you never know if you can go in for the trade because what if she's there and it's so hard to actually get vision. So you could lane swap. It doesn't seem like Fnatic or Alex is going to go too mid for this. Uh, top, by the looks. Yeah, right. Lucian is already top, so they will lane swap and therefore force Evelyn to just be more passive now. Oh, again, Jaren Edward are walking in towards the blue ball, but there is a big stack of them inside of the brush. Edward going to go low. He's got his flash, and there is a flash to get out. Will they follow? Peke comes in from the side. Oh. First blood for Gragas, and they're not done just yet. Ignite goes down. Q has landed. Barrier comes out from Genja. One more body slam will slow him right down, and there's the finisher. Cyanide gets the second. What a start for Fnatic. And that is a 50 AP body slam. Level one from Gragas. He has so much damage. 
damage. And Fnatic expected Gambit to do this. They have studied this, and Gambit has been doing it in the past, moving up towards the blue buff when there's a lane swap to try and stop it, and they just read them like a book. And Fnatic, while they're here, going to be stealing away the red buff. Actually, Diamond is doing the exact same over the other side of the map. So Fnatic doing a good move on that one. And a two for zero start. And look where the kills went on to Cyanide to get a jungler rolling to have more impact on the lanes. And for Soaz as Gragas. And Soaz could go down to the lane instantly and get XP in the start. So he's going to be level two now. And there's pretty much no chance of him not getting any farm. He has so much AP, his barrels can clear the back wave with just two of them at level 2. That is a lot of easy farm for him. There is Cyanide getting his blue buff. The buff which lured Gambit in there for those initial two kills as Peke going a bit aggressive onto Alex, but you can just never go aggressive when you've got an Evelyn on the other team unless you've got vision of him somewhere across the map. And that's why they want to force him to move down to either help in this 3v1 with pushing or go defend up top 2v2. So they have full vision and then Peke can be more aggressive in the mid lane. And speaking of aggressive, actually, does take a bit of damage there from Alex Hitch. And the minions hammering away on him as well because of that. Now, let's talk this 2v1 scenario. It's Genja and Edward with uh, Jinx and Thresh against Gragas, who picked up the kill early on. Who's, who's the strongest in these 2v2 scenarios? Surely it's going to be Gragas with the barrel. I mean, Gragas has more farm potential, but Mundo is actually pretty good with his cleavers. If he can manage to land them, we see right now he's actually keeping up so well in farm, and he's actually shoving Fnatic off to their, to their turret. Yeah, slightly ahead even of Soaz as Gragas right now, as we are going to see Diamond try and he get in no around flash. the back, and he's allowed him in there. Oh, oh what a hook from Edward! The play's going to knock him back. Ignites down. He won't escape that one. Genji gets one back for Gambit. The fact that Soaz got down in the lane so early, he actually made it push. Gambit is now punishing him for this. They're freezing the lane, forcing him to stay far out, and it was an easy gank for, for Diamond Pokes to do. Oh, well, we see a similar thing here on the top side of the map. Cyanide was just moving through the enemy jungle. Diamond making his way across map at this point. And it looks like Cyanide actually wants to steal away jungle. Always a, <laughs> a ballsy thing to do, to put it bluntly, against someone like Diamond. And now they start to close in as that wave pushes to the turret. But Diamond is going to be there. Diamond is expecting this gank. If they actually go through with it and he comes in, they can punish Fnatic and take a few kills. The Diamond just moving off to the left-hand side of that lane just to see how this one all goes down. He's going to let Cyanide get as close as he possibly can. Darian takes a lot of damage, actually using his flash to get out there. Fnatic didn't really take much damage from the turret at all. Very smart by Fnatic. As soon as they see Diamond, they just back out. Sana didn't even go in for Darian. He just safeguarded out instantly and got out alive. Smart play. It's out alive at that one. We're seeing first items actually coming down. The coin now added in to that door and shield from Edward. And so as again, trying to get the farm while it's there. He sees Gambit have gone back. He's like, okay, I know it's going to push that lane up again and probably they're going to freeze it away from me, but I'm going to take it while it's there. It's a bit harder for him to freeze now when he's level 5 on Soas. His barrel is doing a lot of damage to the minions, so he should be able to, you know, shove all the way into Gambit's turret if they try to freeze it. It still means he's open for ganks from everyone though, and then he still has no flash. Still no flash and body slam only gets you so far as Peke is going to dodge out of the damage there that Alex throws his way in. One thing's for sure, you don't want to get Alex rolling or, or let Alex get rolling. I think is the right way we should be phasing that one on this Zed or on any assassin. And Alex is just free farming right now. Normally Fizz... He could kill Cyanide. He can actually go for him. Yeah, man. I was going to say, he could totally kill him at this point. Oh, Peke can walk in. He'll just chase him down for the kill. And there is the second one. Diamond coming around. That was surprising for me that... Cyanide stuck around with half HP knowing Alex is level 6. Yeah, I know. Mean, Cyanide completely underestimated the damage Alex could do. And at the same time, Diamond came in as backup for Alex, so he felt safe during the dive, even though it was 1v2 at the start. He did go low from that one, but they got the two kills out of it. And after what was a bit of a disastrous face check start from Gamut, they actually have the lead in the gold and in the kills now. Simply due to the fact that they were winning the mid lane so hard and the gang coming in bot lane, they have now completely gone back in the game. And Alex, we talked about in the pregame, once he gets rolling early, he can help the other lanes and really start dominating. I see that Reckless is starting to gain a nice CS advantage here though when you compare those two AD carries, 63 to 44. 
Peke just having a bit of free farm now. He gets back into his lane, but he is 20 CS behind that of Alex Itch right now. Darian is doing a great job of staying ahead of that Gragas. And look at the jungle creeps even, 40 to 16. They're basically just winning on farm everywhere right now, except for the AD carry position. But Lucian or Reckless is just staying back and just farming all he wants. But that's mainly also due to Genji constantly freezing the lane, so he's uh, he's getting the CS a lot slower than, than Reckless is right now. Yeah, and also because of that kill, he's pretty much bang level on gold with him overall. There is the blue buff coming up. Alex just going to be pinged back onto that one so that he can be taking that one away. Actually, funnily enough, if we think back to yesterday's game, we saw Diamond taking most of the blues and leaving Kha'Zix without that blue buff. Yeah, I mean, right there, I think what they simply said was, Kha'Zix, you're strong enough, go bot lane, and then you take the enemy blue buff, and I just get my own. And that's kind of what happened for them. This game, though, they just want to keep Alex snowballing. They want to give him everything he needs to constantly harass Peke. This is just completely wrong for Peke from the, from the guy we've seen the last few games, where he dominated the lane himself. Now he's getting shoved in. Yeah, you can see the Cutlass is already done here as well for Alex Hitch, so he's well on his way to becoming a ridiculously strong Zed. And excited to see when Alex starts to roam, funny enough I should say that, he heads up towards that top side, but Lee Sin was in the jungle, they were spotted in there by that ward, but when Alex starts to move around, Fnatic have to be very careful about it. Yeah, normally you want your Blade of the Rune King before you really start doing the split pushing. It gives you a lot safer and a lot better 1v1 uh, material for you, and you can also escape ganks with it. Dragon is down to half HP. We see a ward put over. Don't think that's actually got vision of them there. That's a little bit far out, probably spotting Alex going around the side, but Fnatic nowhere near that one. Gambit pick up an incredibly good Dragon. Gambit simply punished Fnatic for having their bot lane top. That's why you normally don't want to lane swap away from the Dragon area, because you lose all the control on it, and simply free Dragon for Gambit, and they're just in the driving seat. Now, top lane is actually pushing out right here. We see Peke getting himself that blue buff. Diamond just picking up his red as well. Top lane turret is down to half HP. Interested to have a look at the bottom turret as well, where the other 2v1 is taking place right now. And so as because of that barrel clear that he's got, there's actually a full HP on his turret. Yeah, he's been able to keep them away. It is due to the barrel and due to the fact, again, they were just freezing it. He is falling far behind in CS though, compared to Darren, who's just getting every single one. Yeah, pushing that right up onto him as we see. We zap coming through. Our gambit gonna go in heavily for this one. Actually, Evelyn is not there as so as trying to bait out Genja. Wow. What a bait he was as well. Genja down to half HP. He's used his barrier and he gets kicked back in. Cyanide gets that kill. What a bait by Soas standing on the traps there. What a bait. He wanted Genja to come in and auto tag him and he instantly just shot him back. Oh, Fish is coming out. Peke not going to follow it up though. He was scared that the death mark was coming his way. In the end, Alexic decided not to go all in on that one. He, no flash actually on Peke, so he needs to be careful what he uh, wishes for in this fight. Yeah, but right now though, when Alex is so low, if he should go in for the kill, he might actually risk dying himself. So, smart play by Peke and actually getting a little bit back in the lane. See about that one. Diamond has come up now into this top turret to help things out. Bit of more poke damage avoided, oh, and there is the death mark coming down. Has he got enough damage? I think he does. It pops. He's still alive, oh. but he'll finish off. And Alex Hitch gets his second kill of the game. We see right here Pega using his trickster to avoid some of the damage from Alex. Immediately he jumps in on him because now he can get the kill without any problems. Had he saved his trickster, he couldn't have done the same. I haven't started to come up there and I think he was like, I, I'm in behind him, but I'm not sure that we're actually strong enough at this point to uh, avoid that damage being turned right, on, uh, right around on us uh, and allowing Yellow Star and Reckless to actually pick up a kill. If you look at the AD carry uh, CS, it's a massive difference. It's a Reckless huge head. difference. We also had Genja just dying before when he actually finally got into the turret of, uh, of Fnatic. So, all in all, oh, great Tibbers. Tibbers going down and Darian flashes straight away from that one. There's no tower. The calling's going to come through, but is it enough damage? Oh. It will be with a flash. Reckless picks up the fourth of the game for Fnatic. Tied on kills now. Cyanide is actually coming around as well. And this game is just insane. There's plays everywhere. 2v1, they make them. 1v1 in the mid lane, they make the plays. Now they can pressure this turret. Eve is coming around, but again, yeah, not sure how strong actually Diamond will be in that scenario. And apparently strong enough because Fnatic not wanting to risk that at all. Backing straight away from it. 20 CS lead also that Alex has, as well as that 2-0-1 Blade of the Ruin King. His death mark will be coming off cooldown here shortly as well. And 
he can bet that he's not scared about using it. And Alex has just loved this lane swap because it meant that Sina couldn't help Pega at all, and Alex was just left alone against him and could just dominate him. Actually, the lanes are kind of backfired for Fnatic in that case, also with Source being behind on CS, but we do have Reckless though, as the saving grace. Saving grace. But, will he be able to avoid Alex Hitch later in the game? It is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy, but we do have Yellowstar who can pick up, uh, what's the call again, the bell? The what? <laughs> you're confusing me, I don't know what you're talking about. I, for some reason I forgot the name of it, but he can pick up uh, Mirakil's Crucible. Crucible. There you go. Exactly, yeah. And then help uh, uh, Reckless survive by, you know, popping the heal on him, giving him the cleanse for maybe the slow, so Alex can get a few auto attacks in, and then maybe Reckless can survive and kill Alex. See how uh, he actually goes on that front. See that Alex... As I said, 2-0-1, big CS lead, and he's playing aggressively when he knows that he can pick up these kills. Finally, we see actually the 2v2 coming back into fruition down in that bottom lane, and we'll see how that difference with a Bloodthirst already done here for Reckless compared to just a BF sword and a long sword actually for Genja affects this 2v2. And Cyanide is down here for backup if he should be needed. He is spotted by a ward though, and Diamond is here as well. Will we see a 3v3 fight? Gonna risk going in for this one. Do they think they're strong enough? That's 2 1 1 Cyanide. And actually, they are gonna put the chompers down. They get away. Flash up though on towards Reckless. Where is Tibber? Surely gonna come down in this one. There he is. But Reckless is gonna die. And they're not sure they can finish off Annie behind the tower now. But that, so well orchestrated by Gambit. They tricked Fnatic into that one because they had the vision of Cyanide all along. Yeah, instantly as they saw Cyanide moving away, they started, boom, the whole fight. Flash hook from Edward, that was so amazing. So, so good. Gambit, despite that horrible <laughs> level one, you know, losing two men straight away, which you know, is not as impactful now, we should say, as it, as it used to be, uh, dying that early on in the game, but still has its impacts nonetheless. They've pulled it back here. 5-4, it's a 2,000 gold lead almost that they sat on as well. And we have uh, Soas. Full AP, no tanginess as, as at all, so he's gonna have a lot of poke, a lot of wave clear as well. So Fnatic will be able with him and Lucian rather easy. They still have to deal with this Alex guy who's gonna split push. Yeah, and dive in onto them as well. Survivability when you go in full damage could be a little bit of an issue for them. See, Cyanide just working his way back towards that mid lane because that turret going very low. And I think Alex might have it away. No, XPK coming in from the side. Are they going to go for him? Where is the ultimate? Actually, he turns it around here, goes on towards Cyanide, pretty much assuming that he was going to die. And he's not wrong on that one. Cyanide fall. But the time that he actually took there to go down allowed the minions to finish off the tower. Yeah, he did pick up the turret for it, but he still gave away a kill right here. Pega getting slightly back in the game. Late game Fizz is very scary. He can pretty much kill everything. So if Pega can get to that point, we will like to see a very exciting 1v1 scenario between him and Alex in the full late game scenario. And Fizz can dodge that damage as well that Alex puts out if he times everything If he times correctly. it perfectly, yes. Yeah. We'll see about that one. So as obviously now up in this top lane against Darian. And that's what we're going to see. Actually, the Cleavers do a lot of damage to Soaz. You can see he's pretty much trapped on his own turret there as the dragon does spawn. Edward just checking it out with the lantern. And this dragon now up. We've got both duos in the bottom lane. Are we going to see a fight for the dragon itself? Gambit has a teleport where Fnatic has the ignite on Soaz. So they can start it, have Darien teleport down, and they can take it 5v4, or at least force Fnatic into a bad fight. See about that one, but there's a lot of pings going down. There's two pink wards on top of each other. Who's going to be able to get this one? It's Alex, I think. Cyanide a little bit too scared of the damage that that Zed, who's now going to brutalize or add it into his bla Blade of the Ruin King, can do to him. Can be hold that vision control at least for now, but it doesn't look like they're making a move anytime just yet towards that dragon. However, we do see Cyanide coming in. This time there's a pink ward in there, so they've got no vision here, Gambit, of Lee Sin. And Edward just tried to bait out, and they're going in. Oh, they're going in towards Edward, and Edward's gonna die from this one before they can do anything about it. Here comes the teleport down, though, and there is the ultimate coming out of Diamond. There's the super mega death rocket. Diamond flashes in. They're gonna tank up the turret. They can afford to do it as well. Flashing from Darian. Diamond's gonna fall. Reckless still alive. Darian will chop him down, though, with a cleaver, and now he's under the turret. I don't I don't think he's got enough HP for that just yet. 
both Alex and Peke couldn't get in. Alex forced Peke away, and they're trying to close in on towards Cyanide, trying to get into this slippery lease in. Alex has caught vision of him. Cyanide's headed off in towards Gambit's jungle. Even if they don't get him, they can get Dragon here. But Fnatic thought everything was so good when they did the engage, killed Edward. But boom, teleport from Darien, they turn it around, Diamond goes in, he sets everything up, he hits the ulti on three people, slowing everyone, and then when Darien arrives, he can just dive them and take two kills and the dragon. No, he'd actually stop the dragon. Yeah, I, I actually think I was wise there from Peke as well to push this wave up towards the turrets, made the Alex H actually come back to that mid lane. And in the end, Cyanide got away. Gambit didn't do the dragon, but they still sit on that 2,000 gold lead. And they managed to get two kills bot lane here, making them even stronger for the next dragon fight. And Alex, Alex will just continue to farm at this point and get it stronger and stronger. Once he gets the last whisper, he can kill everyone. If you look down uh, Diamond's build again, he's going the same route as he did yesterday, which was a bit of mix and match actually before he completed any of those other items. Blade of the Ruin King. Uh, the Negatron Cloak, I think he then bought a Giant's Belt and went kind of three different routes before finishing things off. This time around though, Gambit have made the move down towards Dragon. They've got everyone there and they're going to pick that one up. The hook was close to landing on Yellow Star 2. And once again, they take a free Dragon. They simply use the fact that no Fnatic isn't nearby. Go in, five people, take it fairly safe and now they can return to the lanes and keep farming. Source is down the bot lane though, spotted by a ward. That ward's in the tri and Nothing they can really do about that. Honestly, it's reckless that's got the sweeping lens at this point, the AD carry, so they can't actually clear that one out. They do get spotted. Are oh, they going to go in for it? There's a flash, Timbers! Oh, they're going to blow to pieces. Edward goes low. He's a dead man. Not going to escape that, but Diamond putting there. some counter pressure in. Alex Itch and Darian are both coming around. Chopper lands onto Yellow Star. Don't think he's going to get away, but can they get any more from it? Super Mega Death Rocket. There's the Chopper's Death Mark is on Reckless. He goes down. Gambit a cleaning house, but they've gone low and then starting to back away. Wise move, Peke's there. Gambit should get out now. But Gambit is simply moving as soon as something happens. Once they spotted Source there, Alex and Darian move from the mid lane and they came down before Peke was even close. They will pick up two kills. Constantly, Gambit is just, you know, counter ganking everything Fnatic does and they keep picking up kills. This is the closest that Fnatic have been to losing a game thus far this season. Seven for zero, they are perfect record. This Darian. He's pulling two people uh, underneath the turret there and not caring about the turret hits or the damage that they can throw his way. He now has that spirit visage. He's got himself a giant's belt as well. He starts to get to that range now, that area now where he's just uncontrollable. Completely uncontrollable. He actually gone for the Black Cleaver before the last Whisper. It's a fan of build. And again, it's just going to give him so much damage in these fights. There's no armor though on Fnatic's side at the moment. No armor as of yet, obviously they're, they're missing that usual tanky top lane that we're just so used to at this point. Going in instead for that Morel uh, Morel Anomicon, we'll get that word out. So got himself the workings of that Void Staff here as well. Right now Gambit putting down the damage onto this bottom turret, which for me, been up far too long considering the amount of action that's gone on down there. Yeah, but every time there was action, both teams kind of backed off that's or went true. to Dragon, so they never really got to do anything on this turret. And they won't even on this wave. Nope. Sawaz so really wants to keep that turret alive there, using everything. Oh, he's got Peke, gets caught out. Is he going to be able to dodge the death mark? He's timed it right. But Diamond comes across the side there. And, well, they didn't finish it off. I'm just quite surprised. Well done by Peke, though. Oh, oh, the rocket. Super Mega Death Rocket going through. Oh. 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 Wow, across the map from Genja. Brilliant. That was amazing hit. Wow, what a game, though. Alex didn't want to go for it because there were four people from Fnatic. He didn't want to risk dying and then simply giving free goal for something like Reckless. Instead, though, Genja said, you know, I got this. I got this. Boom. Fire the rocket. I got this one, guys. Across the map. Oh, oh so has not paid dead. attention. And you're not getting away from the jinx, I'm afraid. Shield comes in. He's got a red buff. There's a tower there. And the minions are now gone. He's going to get slowed down by the zap. And he's not even getting range to take any damage. So has manages to body slam away. But the zap finishes off. Genja picks up two Did kills Darren in half a minute. Though. Oh, backs off wisely enough. Alex has already gone down to the wolves. Don't want anything to do right here when he doesn't have his ultimate ready. Quickly touch on Alex Phil again. I actually like the fact he delays the last whisper because, as we quickly touched about, there's no armor except for the chain wrist Sonnet just picked up. And that means that 
he can run riot in there, as, as can Genja as well at this point. I mean, Bloodthirster got that zeal in there as well. Exactly the same as uh, what's over the other side for Reckless as well at this point of the game. Uh, on the other side, obviously a lot of magic damage coming in from uh, Fnatic side of things. You know, if you, if you look at that in one way, you know, Alex does so much physical damage, there's no armor there. But on the other side, they've got a Warmog's Spirit Visage Mundo, who's just going to take no damage from them. Yeah, I mean, who's going to kill him? They need to put everyone they have on him to actually take him down. See, Diamond catching out Cyanide. Oh, but he gets kicked in <laughs> into the body slam in the barrel. What a flash around the side, but the ultimate was ready. Well, here comes Alex Hitch. Diamond's actually going to survive this one. The Ignite is ticking. I tell a lie, he does go down. Well, look at the damage He's there. So as will fall. One Peke for one there. in the end. Peke does come across the side. That's a two for one. Good reply by Fnatic. First the kick back from Cyanide, and then the barrel coming from uh, from Soas completely removes Diamond from the game right here. He couldn't even try and escape, and I was saying he caught someone out. Eh, it was the other way around. That is true. There is Darian, by the way, pushing constantly on this tower and just gaining the aggro from it there, which, as we said, with that Warmog's now on top of his spirit visage, he's just not too worried about the damage that he takes. We also saw Genja finishing off his Phantom Dancer on that last time that he did return off home. So, what do we have right here? Peggy just got a kill. He's now getting more and more into the game. We talked about how strong Fizz is late game. If he can keep punishing Gambit for making these a bit overextended moves and keep getting a few kills, Fnatic has the comeback. Reckless will just keep farming. He's still ahead in farm. And he's just, you know, gonna get stronger and stronger. And this is what Reckless does. He can always farm. Always farm. It's a 220 at this point, which. Actually, Genji was a lot further behind than he is now, if you look at how that's progressed. Uh, one other thing to note, the Zonya's Hourglass finished by Peke, so he doesn't really have to rely on, you know, timing that jump anymore. He can just get away from the damage that that death mark puts in completely. That'll be certainly interesting to see as he waits here off to the side. Not sure he's got the damage to kill Darian just yet, though. Fnatic are in position, though, for this dragon. Will they actually choose to fight for it, or will they try and find a pick first? Oh, that turret is going to go down in the bottom lane, and Darian basically zoned Owning them out here with that beefy Mundo. They're going to throw ultimates his way, and they're actually going heavily onto him. Tibbers goes down, and that is the Mundo. We said, how does he die? And it's by throwing everything you've got at him. Everything was thrown on him. This means Fnatic though has to back off. They don't really, they can't really fight for this dragon. And we see Alex maybe come in from the side. Waiting around the side there, but they knew he was there. He was stood on top of a ward. He's just spotted this pink ward as well in the brush. Gambit, start off the dragon. So despite losing the Mundo, Darian again dying for the sake of his comrades. Yeah, it wasn't really worth it for Fnatic to invest so much in killing one guy, especially because they immediately had to back out and just give a free dragon again for Gambit. Oh, and there is the death mark. Actually, it is going to be dodged out there, but Alex not going to be under too much pressure, just dodges back off to his shadows. This is the thing. The set ultimate was changed, so now your shadow is where you used to be when you actually cast it. You can use this to juke around and play a bit more risky and still get out alive. That's what Alex is. Certainly, these guys got a mastery that kind of boggles your mind when you see some of the moves that they're able to pull off with that one. Meanwhile, Gambit are actually pushing somewhat of that bottom lane, and it looks like we're going to see the blue steel. Blue steel. You just really wanted to do that one. I've been planning <laughs> that all day. That's for you, Twitter fans. Uh, but Gambit there, as I said, getting away the blue. That stops either Soaz or XPK getting their hands on that one. And we have the last whisper now on Alex. He's pretty much doing true damage when he actually goes in, and only the Sonyas from Peke and the Sonyas the Swords about to build can actually stop his damage. Alex will get his blue here, which means two blues on the side of Gambit and Darian. Despite his earlier death, he's confident to get back in that mid lane. He's just picked up another Giant's Belt, so he's, he's pretty tanky at this point. Let's just he's say that. He's pretty tanky. If you have to invest everything on killing him, you know he's tanky. And again, it was very worth it for him, the fact he baited out all this stuff, because it was just a free dragon for Gambit afterwards. The dragon continues to farm up a storm there. 192 CS he's currently sat on. We look down the AD carries. Trinity Force is added in now for Reckless. Uh, he's got a 20 CS lead, but as I said, that's not really getting bigger compared to when we saw it in the early game, and it was just growing. It's hard for him to actually go too far out in the lanes, because there's the risk of Evelyn, there's, a, there's the risk of teleport, and also you have Alex who can walk down and kill you pretty much without any trouble. Alex actually headed up towards that top lane, and 
They can do this. Alex obviously got the maneuverability. Darian got the tankiness. Then you've got your two split pushes right there, and you can, the other three can go on their own. Yeah, right now, though, Gambit is walking pretty randomly around the map. We see Genji walking down to do the golems while Alex was split, uh, pu uh, split pushing in top. And we had Darian just standing in the mid lane throwing cleavers. So they're not really doing anything on the map yet. Edward is clearing out pink wards right under Fnatic's nose, though, on the side of the Baron there. And got a pink ward down in that brush, which if form tells us anything, he's probably safe and they throw again the barrel. See how much damage he took from that one or how much damage he didn't take. I think he avoided most of it, but just in time on the lantern. Yeah, the lantern actually took all the damage from this and also got him away safely. I do like the fact, though, the Fnatic wants to try and punish him because they couldn't really lose anything on this. No dragon is up and they were already in position to defend the turret. So they could have done everything to kill him this time and just gotten a free kill. He lands. You see that Peke waiting off to the side, thinking about going in, but probably wondering again, is it really worth throwing everything at him? We can see just the damage that a cleaver does there is about a third of Peke's health. And Darren hasn't moved for the last five minutes. He's just stuck in his mid lane, constantly throwing the cleavers in the face of Fnatic, and he's so annoying. And there we go, Deathmark actually coming in on towards Reckless, but Alex Hitch has to back away there just because of the damage that they can put down and the crowd control out of Yellowstar. But again, once again, he can use his ultimate to just back out of the fight. Whenever he makes a decision where he's like, nope, not going to go for this, safely gets out. Darian is just playing that annoying role. Are they going to go for him this time? The ulti is out, out of Fizz, and this is Darian going to fall this time. A lot easier, you know, only having to use those two ultimates to finish him off. That's the tank down, but what are they going to do with that? I mean, they have so much healing reduction. So even he, though he pops his ultimate, it barely gives him anything and they can actually burst him down. This time, they get a free kill and this is what they need to get back in the game. Alex is waiting here in the tri bush. Is he going to have... He has no ultimate though. No. He can't really go for this. And especially when Yellow Star is walking with those rings of doom around him. Knowing that you could be taken down at any uh, any second, stunned up with Reckless, who with that Trinity Force and that Bloodthirster in there now is going to be packing quite a lot of damage as Diamond comes in around the back. A stun missing there out of Yellow Star, and Diamond just running his usual annoying self in the enemy jungle. We have to question the way Gambit is playing right now, though. They're not really doing anything with the lead they had, except for actually right now pushing this turtle a little bit. But apart from this, they haven't done anything, and Fnatic have just been able to farm up and actually getting more and more back in the game. Pekka is getting stronger. We also have the Sonyas now on Soas. Sonyas for Soas, so that basically takes him out of the equation for Alex, who's not got many targets left. And the way that supports work these days as well, Yellowstar could even get himself up if this game continu uh, continues like this. 30 minutes in, we've got less than a minute for the Dragon. We see already that Tussle is going down on the bottom side of Fnatic's jungle, using the scans, getting the pink wards in there to gain that vision control back. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a very good position by Fnatic right here because they avoid the fact that Gambit could maybe be in this jungle and catch them when they run, run or go in for the Dragon. So it's smart they're actually doing it beforehand. And if Edward or something should walk in towards, they can take a kill on him and then the Dragon. There's another scan coming down this time for Gamut. They're starting to walk up a little bit more. Diamond is going to face check this one. Actually, a lot of damage will be blocked by uh, that Banshee's Veil, but the rest of it is going to be coming in. And there is the kill. Deathmark goes down on towards Yellowstar. It's going to be enough to get it. Genja actually secured it from the side of that one. And now Peke is chasing. He's on you. Alex is trying to get away. Actually dodges away. Soaz is going to try and chase him down from this one. And he does manage to finish him off. Meanwhile, Peke has jumped back over up to the blue. I think Gambit is going to make a play for that mid tower here. And Darren is just chasing Swords right now. He wants to get him. And he's going to be able to stick to him here. Those cleavers doing a lot of damage, but well, actually, got a little bit too carried away with that one because he decides not to chase in there after all, and that's where it didn't get any more pressure. But just as we talked about, Fnatic had the position in the jungle to catch out Gambit. They thought they had the full control and they could just walk in where they wanted to. Instead, they found a fist and Diamond died for it. Alex. Almost made it out alive. Beautiful jukes from him. Now Darian is going to try and zone them away because the dragon is spawned, of course. And Genji can pretty much do that one on his own right now. Doesn't need the help of his team. Actually, Peke moving forward towards Darian. He saw how they can take him down last time with just two of them, which 
you know, you compare that to 10 minutes ago where it took all the ultimates that they could throw at him to take him down. That's also a worrying sign for Gambit. Yeah, that's definitely something they have to worry about because, again, Fnatic will get stronger, the champions, they have all do well in the late game, and you also have an Annie with some perfect engages so far with the tippers, combine that with the barrel from Source, and all of a sudden you have a team fight on you you don't really want to take. Have a look down the CS here. We're 32 minutes in. We've got 300, over 300 on Reckless. We've got over 300 on Alex Itch. And, well, again, just not too far away from this one either. And if you look down the total, total golds across the board, between the AD carries only 1,000, but the mid lane at 3,000. And now, once again, they chase down on towards Darian. He gets knocked up, knocked back by the barrel, and he's going to go down again. They throw a couple of good uh, big ultis onto him, but They've taken him, and that's the tank out. They can go for the turret. Tibber's tanking it up. They can take this. They can even keep going. Peg is going top lane to stop the, the push from uh, from Alex. And right now, they just keep pun punishing on Darian. He overextends, and he gets killed every single time. And not really able to go where he wants, because rather than just letting him do that and forcing him back each time, Fnatic saying, no, we're going to punish you even harder uh, than just pushing you back a little bit in lane so that you can come back once again. We're going to kill you every time, even if it takes two ultimates. And this time, Fnatic finally got something for the trouble. They took the mid turret down. That is goal for everyone. And it's again, they're just making a beautiful comeback. Oh, we're going to see Alex going in on towards Peke once again. Last seconds on yours, but I don't think he's got enough to get away from this one. Actually, he gets Whoa. over towards Diamond, but Diamond was right there. Stunned up, albeit and when he came out of the stun, picks up the kill. That's the kill they were looking for. That's a lot of damage down from XPK and from Fnatic. But there's still a lot of wave clear, especially with this Gragas. He can keep them off the turrets. Mid turret is fairly low. They can just actually go in and face tank it and take it if they want to. It seems more they just want to back off and, you know, reset the whole game again. Have a look again down some of the items. We saw. Oh, actually not because Cyanide here getting pushed into. There's a flash hook landing on Yellow Star. He's a half HP will fall. And Gambit gonna back away with that one kill. Happy with what they got in the jungle. Are they gonna go straight towards Baron here? They can do it. There's two people dead from Fnatic. No teleport on Pekka. He can only have to ho his home guards, and they're starting it right now. They can take it very fast. Let's see if Fnatic can do anything about this one. Explosive cask is up. Actually, Alex going in there on towards Cyanide. He's going to follow him over the wall, but Cyanide safeguards off onto the minions. But that was all they needed for this Baron. That's the smite completely out of the way. Diamond and Genji are not going to make a mistake. They picked that one up. And it was such a smart play by Gambit. After the fight in top, they backed off. Fnatic actually also thought they were, you know, backing off. We had to go through our own jungle now to see what's happening. And then Gambit just catches them again and take another kill, and then they can take the Baron. This is what they needed to do. Oh, Alex is waiting here. That's on yours. Actually, was still on cooldown there. Well, the death mark could have been used by Alex, but in the end, why? When so has and Cyanide are there, he's probably going to be helped out from that one. Now, Alex Fnatic continuing to trail. You know, we're 15, 15 here on kills, but if you look at the goal, it's 7,000 the difference here for Gambit. So the Baron buff for Gambit. Even more than seven, because I just can't count. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But now we have the same situation as 10 minutes ago. Gambit is in the lead, and they have to make a move on the map. Alex can pretty much duel anyone. Six won't really be able to deal with him yet. Maybe when he gets his death cap, he can actually start fighting back, but he can't yet. So Alex can just go to the lane and push it in constantly, and the rest of Gambit can move up. You can see that Guardian Angel is there for Evelyn now for Diamond and they only need a couple of hits with Jinx in particular here on that turret and that will be gone completely. Leaves then this open mid lane really uh, allows them to split push out the side lanes as Peke here home guarded up coming back in to make sure that they can hold on to this one. Diamond's trying to flank, Alex is trying to flank as well and they could be in for a bit of surprise. Actually wisely I think going to give up that uh, turret. Yeah, they, were, they were ready for Fnatic to engage to try and stop the turret going down and then they had the perfect positions with Evelyn and Alex to come in for the back line. Let's see if they can hold on to this one. They've got some good wave clear there with that Gragas putting out tons and tons of damage. The Hulk not quite connecting on, on towards Yellow Star there. But the poke, decent here as well for Gamut. They've got those cleavers who, they do sting at this point. You've got Alex who can throw in. You've got Genji who's got a decent range on him there as well. But will it be enough to actually break through here? Now the top lane is pushing in favor of Fnatic, so they don't, they don't have to worry about that right now. Bot lane will push up for uh, for Gambit. It opens up for the possibility to rotate on the map and then take the, the auto turret in the bot lane if they can keep Fnatic in their base. 
they can keep them there. Genja has just taken away the blue buff and the white on the Fnatic side of things. Diamond has gone towards his top lane to make sure that that one is pushing back in the correct direction for Gambit. And Darian has just been Dr. Mundo in the jungle, stealing everything away, being that tanky beast at the front of things. He's got a Banshee's Veil now added in on top of his Spirit Visage and the Warmocks. But let's see what Gambit will do. They've pushed up every lane right now. They have pretty much full control of the map and they decide where Fnatic is supposed to be and they decide when Fnatic, you know, can defend. Fnatic right now, they don't really want to engage unless they get the perfect one, they knock back on someone from Gambit into their own turret and then they can take the fight. See that the Infinity Edge has also been added into Genja's build and looks like he's going to be finishing off that last Whisper in the not too distant future. Gambit just looking for that opening, looking for that opportunity. They did push bottom out, they're pushing top out here as well. Darian's just going to stay in middle and say, if you leave this, I am going to start pushing through. Right now, we see Genja pushing down the bot lane. He's far away from everything. If Fnatic wants to fight, they will lose a turret for it, but at least they will have an advantage number-wise. They certainly will. Diamond and Alex between them actually getting through, and Diamond going to get caught out here by Peke. The ultimate is going to snag him, but he's got a Guardian Angel. Darian is there at the front. They've got it on towards Yellowstar. Deathmark won't be enough damage to pop him, but Alex flashed in there, got more damage down and got the kill, and now his Guardian Angel goes down. Can he get away from this one? Only so far, Cyanide is able to follow through. Darian's actually behind the turrets there in the enemy base, looking for an exit, but I'm not sure he's going to find it. Oh, Cyanide follows him through. Q already connected. Chain comes in there, but they can't finish it off. Box goes down from Edward to keep them safe. In the end, it's a two for one. And Fnatic instantly, as they spot Genja being gone, they just go for it. Peggy is just landing the fish, and they engage. They get also the, 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 they got the Garden Angel of Diamond as well. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> That's a cheeky little zone. He's actually going to stand on the traps, and Genja doing masses of damage there. He's going to be able to force them back from this one. He is for now. Cyanide going low as well. Actually, they could chase in from this one. There's the flay coming down. The kick will get him. Well, he gets excited and Diamond comes in from the side. Reckless is very low. Oh, almost been blasted in one shot there. He's healing back from the race, but he needs to run the hell away from that one. Diamond's headed around the side of them. I think he's going to have the range. Zap just missing out. Diamond doesn't want to go in for it. Wow. Fnatic pushed it down and Gamma just turned around and took it. So I going for this. Oh, Edward actually going to be caught out. So as starts to move in, Flame Chompers go in and actually Fnatic can't chase on after that one. One minute 50 until Baron comes up. This is this is Fnatic Gamma just as we love to so see. So much action and Fnatic got to give them credit. They made the right decision when Genja wasn't there, took the fight. Then they overextended their, their welcome. They pushed down and Gambit simply just turned around on them, picked up a kill and now pushed Fnatic down. Now, what's next here? The Dragon is up. That goes down super quickly from uh, Kenja here. We saw in that last fight, they can't really stand and fight against him because as soon as he gets that movement speed of when they take one person down, they can chase the entire team. There's nobody tanky enough in that lineup right now for Fnatic that can deal with him. If you look again, you made the point, what well, we were at 40 minutes, you made the point 20 minutes ago that there's not really any armor in there. And I hate to say it, but there's still not really any armor there. No, but I mean, that means simply free damage from Alex. But he's really not the issue right now for them. Just the overall team of Gambit, they're team fighting so well and they're so far ahead that it's very hard for Fnatic to do anything unless they punish Gambit when they do something wrong. So uh, the bottom lane just being pushed out once again and really ramping up to this next Baron where Gambit are surely going to be in the right place at the right time. Something like that is not a freebie that you want to give up at this stage of the game. Alex is actually on the top side of things as he spots yellow start. I'm not going to want to go too aggressive on him there. They just want to make sure that they can hold that portion of the map. They've just spotted a ward going down in middle. Alex is already flanking around the sides from this one as well. Ten seconds until that Baron comes into play. Are we going to see Fnatic position for it first? I like the fact though that Fnatic has moved out of the base, gotten some vision around this area and simply saying, you're not going to get this Baron for free. We will try and fight for it. Trying to push out that top lane. I don't think they dare go in for that one. Alex has gone on towards Yellow Star and he's not going to die from the death mark. Alex got away without taking too much damage and he forces the support and that big AoE stun out of the fight. I think actually the Mikhail saved his life right here. He popped it and boom, 
after the death mark hit and he actually survived. So that was oh. they got it. Oh, really getting caught. Yeah, Pekka getting caught out here somewhere as we are gonna see Diamond throw down that ultimate cyanide. He's at the front, can kick one back here if he so chooses. Darian actually taking a lot of damage. He's now got that Guardian Angel in there as well. In fact, we've got what three now on the team for Gambit. They force Fnatic off, but will they have enough to do Baron? I think with Jinx in there and someone tanking it, that's it's going to go down so quick. Yeah, they can do it with a few people and then keep like Darien to just harass and try and keep Fnatic away. There is a ward, so they have full vision of what's going on and they're moving in for this. Moving in from the side, so as up on the top there, just harassed out by Diamond. Darien, Darien trying to be a wall basically between that Baron and the Fnatic team. Peke has started to move around the side. They've Stop doing Baron for now. He's going to be low at 2,900. Edward is going to get singled out from this one. Use the Mikhail's on himself as Peke uses the Zonis, but they're focusing now. Darien is Darien going to get away? Super Mega Death Rocket. Alex Hitch is in the middle of them as well. Whoa. And Alex is still going. Double kill for Zed. There's surely going to be more. Good kill in there from Reckless. We'll throw Alex back, but they can keep chasing here. Cleaver doesn't quite connect on Yellow Star. He's going to try and walk off on the top side. Diamond going to pop his speed boost. He'll go under the turret. No problem for him, but he actually can't get close enough. Yellow Star gets away. Crazy fight again. That was absolutely fantastic by Alex. He goes in from the flank, gets a kill, and then he dodges the ultimate from Soas with his own shadow, and he stays alive. That was insane play. And now Gambit have the time to back away once again onto the Baron. It was down to about 3,000 HP once Gambit peeled away from it and started that fight. This time around, though, with Genja, Alex, and Diamond there, it's not going to last two minutes, but look at it. Cyanide, if there's one man that can steal Barons, it is going to be Cyanide. It's it got is, Darian definitely. to deal with here at the front. Is he going to be able to go over? Gambit have actually stopped doing Baron for now. Too risky to go in there. Alex Hitch goes over, but gets kicked straight back as Cyanide goes down to half HP. He's got, actually, Baron's gone down there. Diamond actually finished it off in the backside. Darian's falling over. Alex is right in the middle. Oh. There goes the Super Mega Death Rocket in. Darian is still chasing this one. Doesn't want to go too far on it. It actually will overextend there a little. Cully comes through, blocked by Genja. The Guardian Angel did get popped there by Darian. Can he escape from it? Lantern's there. Regens with 5 million HP. Very smart by Gambit though. They stopped the Nash shot when, when Sana was close. Once he got pulled away, they finished it fast, picked it up, and then went in for the kills. Ignore, by the way, what I said earlier about Alex not being the main issue, because holy cow, he's doing so well. He is. <laughs> An annoyance, I think, to say the least on that one. And look how fast these towers go down. That is the first inhib tower of this game. The inhibitor's going to fall. Cyanide's done up for 25 seconds, where I don't think Gambit are confident enough to finish that one off. They're going to go bottom. They could go top as well. The waves are in similar positions. They can take the blue buff and the turret, or they can play it safe and simply back off. But this is Gambit. They'll definitely go for this turret. Not wasting any time, and that's what they like to do there. Finishing time after picking up Barons is lightning quick, to be honest with you. You don't mess around when they know that they've got the advantage to get things going. We will, however, see one of them just backing off, and they've not been home for quite a while. We can see the CS totals. Genja is now ahead of Reckless. It's just taken by, yeah, 45 so minutes, close. but he is. And They're now he's behind now again. Now Reckless ahead again. So, all in all, though. Gambit got pretty much everything they wanted from this Baron. Not only, only did they get the buff, they took the inhib, they took another turret, they blew buff away from Fnatic, and they can recall, recall with a lot of gold and now come back and fight. And the Banshee's Veil in this in this setup, you know, it's gonna block the explosive cask out of so as Tibbers coming down. So many uses for it. They got four on the team right now. They <laughs> and Edward didn't go that way, but he's got the crucible anyway, so even if he does get on him, he can get out of it. Yeah, I mean, they're just doing everything to avoid, first of all, the engage, but also the burst damage from Peke. That's, that's the only thing they can really die to now, is a good fish from Peke, and just instantly taking down a target like Genja or Alex. There's also the Guardian Angel, though, on Alex. He's going to be so hard to deal with. Banshee's Guardian Angel, and all that damage as well to add in. Gem uh, Gambit starts to move their way up towards that top lane here, through the enemy jungle. And Darian, sorry, is not scared of... Just getting in, picking up the twin shadows here. Twin shadows for Darian. If they couldn't chase down quick enough before, 
than they certainly can now. That turret already starting to take a lot of damage. Diamond's actually going in for this one. This could be the final fight as Soaz is going to get forced away. Oh. Super Mega Death Rocket zonyard by Soaz. Brilliant timing on that one, but they've gone in onto Cyanide with the Death Mark. He's not going to die. He'll get back onto the Fountain to regen. This is a 5v5 still. No one's died. Fnatic have got the regen in there. Gambit have got the Baron running on for the regen of that. And Fnatic, it looks like they've actually pushed them away. They should be able to tank up this bottom in Inventory, but I don't think they want to risk it. No, they're just going to take the minion wave up and then do the exact same thing. Wait for the ultimates and then go in for another dive. Incredible, incredible game. 86,000 to 67,000 gold. The lead for Gambit were almost 50 minutes into this matchup. So close at this point to ending that seven game win streak that Fnatic have at the top of the LCS table. But can they do it? Can they see it through? Or will Fnatic come up with something somewhat of a miracle at this point? Not Maybe not a miracle, but it's going to be something special if they're to turn this around. Now, Ultimate is ready for Diamond. He's standing from the side. He can go in whenever he wants to for the fight. There go the Twin Shadows into it, they're going to go for Soaz actually, he takes a lot of damage and the Death Mark going to go off but he doesn't die crucially, Diamond goes low, Yellow Star will fall, Peke is low in this one as well, can they finish him off, Genja gets right in there, they've done so much damage that it's going to take Fnatic a while to regen this one back up and that inhibitor is going to fall, will Gambit try and end the game here, Yellow Star is the only one down, this is actually reckless, does a lot of damage on towards Genja. Is that going to be enough though to hold off? Darian is still regening through all the damage they can put their way. But well, there are super minions coming up now in this bottom lane. The mid lane, they're already into the base. The top lane is pushing through as well. Fnatic are holding on but by just a threat. And all these Banshees and Garden Angels means that Peke and Soros can't even do any damage in these fights. It's all up to Reckless right now. He's pretty much 1v5 in these fights and he can't do enough, obviously. So... Gambit, <laughs> back away from this one. Finally, an inhib comes up from Fnatic. That's going to be a sigh of relief for them. But Dragon is going to go down just to bring that gold even further. Swung over towards Gambit, who, to be honest, are pretty much all full, full build at this stage of the game. Got that locket of the Iron Solari in there as well. Actually, we can see that the Quicksilver Sash is starting to appear over on the Fnatic side for Yellowstar. who has got that and the Mikhail's Crucible as well. They're simply trying to make it hard for Alex to choose a target. There's either the Sonya to stop his ultimate or the QSS to completely remove his ultimate. So he can pretty much only go for Sanad if he actually wants it to pop. Now, Byron buff is gone here for Gambit. You see Alex go in there. That, as I said, inhibitor did respawn in. They're going to put some good damage down on towards Alex Hitch there. But you see Diamond getting involved as well from the front side. Alex going low, but don't forget the Guardian Angel. That's going to get him out of trouble as Darian is going to fall low. The calling is coming through on that one. Can they finish him off? Alex so, so close to going down. Genja's going to go low as well. So has his barrel not quite going to land on its target. No one going down from that one. The super Except minions the are they're hammering away and they're going to take down at least one of those Nexus turrets. Gambit see their opportunity. They're going to try and push through for the win. The second Nexus turret is still alive, but Cyanide has now fallen and here surely will be the win. And the first loss for Fnatic this season. So that's going to zone us through the damage there of the death mark, but not the rest of it. Double kill for Edward. Gambit still fighting here. They don't want to finish the game without getting more kills. Peke will zone you. Darian going to get his Guardian Angel pot, but oh. the Nexus goes down and Gambit take down the Fnatic for the first time in 2014 and break that winning streak. What a game! That was one of the best games I've seen. Wow. Everything we had triple one, we had the early ganks, we had the 1v1. Alex in the mid lane was so dominant in the laning phase, and as well, the bot lane from Gambit together with Diamond did so much damage onto Fnatic. It's really hard to figure out where you start with a game like that. And rightly so, here yeah, Gambit enjoying their moment. As he said, I know my big play though. birthday for Alex H. Yes, and oh, what, what a present. A game by him. I mean, I almost feel sorry for him that I said that he wasn't the main issue at this point because team fight after he goes in and he just takes two people down and dodges everything from Source and Cyanide and stays alive. That was one of the most beautiful. Plays I've seen from a set. And that is a
crowning moment here, I think, for, Di uh, for uh, Gambit. The fact that they've had a few issues. We should probably uh, sit, sit ourselves down, down here. So excited about that one that we forgot to sit back down. Uh, so I'm going to move on here and ask you, what was the big play in that one? There were so many big plays that I'm going to be hard-pressed to single one out. I'll take two. The one I just talked about with Alex, where he picked up the kills from the side and got out alive, dodged everything with his shadows. And then I just absolutely loved the rocket that Genji fired the earlier in the game, hit Peke all the way on the top of the map and got a kill. That was a good rocket, and they're, they're the best ones, of course, the of ones course. that come all the way across it. But we have to talk here, Fnatic's first loss of the season. You know, it's, it's obviously far too early to start talking about what Fnatic are going to do after this one. They're sat 7-1, and one, which I'm sure they're annoyed that they're not 8 for 0 right now, but if you look at a record, Fnatic are still so, so good. That game wasn't dominantly one-sided for them. You know, that was a game they could have easily won as well. And there's never any shame in losing to Gambit. Yeah, of it course will, not. It will never make you a bad team. They had, you know, a few chances to win this, but the longer the game was, the harder it was. They kept falling behind. The, uh, the level one was pretty much perfect for them. But the fist pig in mid lane versus Alex was a huge problem. Sunnet couldn't help him due to the lane swaps. So he was pretty much left alone, and Alex just got further and further ahead. And while they slowed down a little bit, I feel like Gambit had it under control pretty much the entire game after that. Was that a technical, uh, you know, a tactical fault from Fnatic to force that 2v1? We talked about it earlier that that's the best way to keep a hold on the Evelyn, to know where that Evelyn's actually going to be defending or pushing on those lanes. But because of that, it left Peke a little bit more isolated in middle. Do you think that cost them in the end? Yeah, I actually think it pretty much cost the game. Also the fact that Source went bot lane at level 1, he got the early level 2 by pushing the wave, and then they could freeze it. So he was stuck in the middle of the lane, and then Diamond could just come in for an easy kill on him, and he also fell behind in CS compared to Darien. So all in all, the only one who benefited from this lane swap was Reckless. Everything else went in favor of Gambit, gave him the whole, the whole early game lead, they just snowballed it. And then we just saw some great individual plays to keep this going. Yeah, and Darian, I have to touch on him again, playing Mundo. Super tanky at the front pretty much the entire game. Went but, a little bit. Yeah, but they were throwing everything at him. A lot of teams will simply push him back, scare him off, and, you know, he just comes straight back to you. He's kind of like a boomerang. Um, but they actually took him down two or three times. They threw a lot at him, but they stopped him from doing it. That is true. I mean, the times where he got the dragon for Gambit by tanking up all this damage, it was worth it. The